Majestic and mysterious, the achievement pillars rise from the top of the giant tree on the surface of Noita's world as you make specific accomplishments or uncover certain secrets during your runs. While I've covered just about all of these in individual videos in this playlist, I started covering them on the very first day of early access, so some of them are a little outdated. I'll make note of that as we go through these. And I've never specifically covered the tree pillars themselves, so that's why we're doing it now. This video will serve as basically a one-stop list with some tips of pretty much all the secrets in the game, but I'll be referring to my original videos of each as we go. And so individual links for all of the applicable ones will be down below in order in the description box. Anyway, let's do this. And what better place to begin than over here on the left side of the tree? So many people ask about what this is, what does this mean? Well, this says Bamalam 552, and it's a monument to my good friend Bamalam for being the first person to go to New Game Plus 28 and defeat the 33 orb boss there, which was a total of 552 orbs collected. It has no known use other than honoring the top tier gameplay of a top tier dude. Anyway, now for the first actual pillar piece. Starting from the bottom of the leftmost pillar, this piece is unlocked by bringing a chest up to the mountain altar and performing the chest drain secret. This is the first of several secrets requiring something to be brought to the mountain altar. All except for one of these can much more easily be achieved by use of the telekinetic kick perk, which was added after some of these secrets were added and thus my videos of these secrets. But it will make your life way, way easier, especially when going for the next one. The Worm Rain event was the first of these secrets added way back in the day, long before Telekinetic Kick and even the Coup item, that requires you to bring one of the anti-gravity worm crystals in Holy Mountains up to the Mountain Altar. Accomplishing this back then was an exercise in frustration that potentially took a very long time, so consider yourselves lucky that we now have several more tools in order to much more easily accomplish this. Moving on, after triggering the Curse of Greed inside the tree, you can find a green greed crystal inside previously unvisited holy mountains. Bringing that to the mountain altar triggers the greed rain event and unlocks the pillar piece. Next, simply offering three emerald tablets at the mountain altar will unlock the pillar piece, as well as either awarding some gold or some deadly hellgazer enemies. The gods giveth and the gods taketh away. And now for the one that telekinetic kick cannot be used for. For this pillar piece, we need to bring one of these unopened monk rocks up to the altar. However, using Telekinetic Kick will cause the rock to open, spawning a monk enemy. So, bringing it up here requires some finesse. I found using both Burst of Air and a coup to be an effective strategy, but this is still one of the most tedious and difficult secrets to achieve, make no mistake. The reward for accomplishing this is just some toaster bots with hands, so yeah, most people would probably only do this once to unlock the Pillar Fragment. And now, after completing the Sunseed quest, more on that later, Later, the desert scale will hold two colored gems. Bringing the yellow one to the altar will create a sun, unlocking the pillar fragment. Likewise, if you bring the blue gem to the altar, it will unlock a tree achievement and create a black hole. The next tree achievement is awarded for using the exit portal at the top of the tower or using music notes to cast the portal spell and entering that. As long as you enter one of these red portals to the mountaintop, you'll unlock this one. This one is for taking all three ghost perks and obtaining the small ghost synergy, which slightly speeds levitation energy recharge. This one is for taking all three rat perks and obtaining the rat tail synergy, which slightly increases movement speed. This one is for taking all three fungal perks and obtaining the shroom head synergy, which slightly increases explosion resistance. This one is for taking three Luki perks, including two Luki mutations and a Luki minion, and obtaining the spider body synergy, which slightly increases movement speed. And this one is for taking either three positive perks or three negative perks, and obtaining either a dark halo or light halo in a run, both granting slight fire resistance. And that's the first of six pillars complete, which dealt mostly with the mountain altar events and perk synergies. Since we have five more to go through, let's get straight to the bottom of pillar number two, which deals with the essences and the moons. The first five fragments, one, two, three, 
4, and 5, each unlock when the proper elemental essence is obtained from around the world. The four outlined in red being the main essences of fire, water, earth, and air, and the one outlined in blue, spirits. Next we have the Void Moon secret, triggered by bringing the first four main essences of fire, water, earth, and air to the center of the moon, turning it to void liquid. Then the Drunk Moon secret, triggered by adding the essence of spirits to the mix and turning the moon into whiskey. The next fragment involves Gordifying Colmy before bringing the four main essences to the moon, turning it to Healthium and spawning the Touch of spells. The next one is unlocked at the Dark Moon by bringing the four main essences there. Another one is unlocked by first Gordifying Colmy and then bringing the four main essences there. Before attempting this, you might want to first eat some Polymorph Mages to get Polymorph Immunity. Nope. The final two fragments on this pillar involve replacing both moons with suns. It doesn't matter which moon you start at or which sun you create there. For the first fragment, you just have to make sure you replace the second moon of the pair with a normal sun. Likewise, for the second fragment, you have to replace the second moon with a dark sun. And that's pillar number two complete. There is a very efficient way to acquire all of the pillar pieces associated with the Sunseed quest in one run, but I'll cover that a little later in the video. For now, let's move on to the shortest of the pillars. Pillar number three is associated with the different endings of the game. The first of which is to simply finish the game down below Colmy in the end room. The second is to achieve the Toxic Gold ending at the Mountain Altar with four orbs or less. Next, with exactly 11 orbs at the Mountain Altar, the Pure Gold ending. And then, with 33 orbs at the Mountain Altar, the Happy Ending. This is pretty much only possible in New Game Plus, since the world contains only 31 orbs prior to that. Though there is an insanely rare chance to find orbs in Great Treasure Chests, so I'm not gonna say it's not possible, but it's pretty close to not possible. For this next one, you have to survive through at least New Game Plus 1, New Game Plus 2, and New Game Plus 3. As long as your run ends after New Game Plus 3, you will unlock this pillar piece. Finally, after beating the game once, you'll unlock Nightmare Mode. Just beat a Nightmare Mode run to unlock the final pillar piece. And that's Pillar 3 complete. We're about halfway through now. Pillar 4 has to do with all the bosses and mini-bosses in the game. Starting from the bottom, this first pillar fragment is awarded for defeating the dragon miniboss inside the dragon cave on the eastern edge of the underground jungle. Spawned by digging into and entering its egg, the dragon's bite deals up to 2,000 damage per second, so having melee immunity can help survivability tremendously. Next up, we've got the pyramid boss, Leg of Three Eye, whose tough outer hide can be instantly bypassed with plasma, even that from the evil eye. Speaking of the Evil Eye, the Forgotten will only become corporal and damageable if there's an Evil Eye laying nearby. Afterwards, it can be defeated quickly with explosions or electricity. The next pillar piece is unlocked for defeating the Wand Connoisseur, which can easily be done by shooting it with something that it can kill itself with while duplicating, such as plasma, saw blades, or in this case, arrows inside a Giga Black Hole. Now, for the Alchemist, high damage spells to power or explosive loadouts work well. Even a humble personal fireball thrower is enough to take it out given the time. The next achievement is for Mecha Colmy, who is immune to projectiles. Piercing electrical and explosive damage work wonders, however. For the Grand Master, you just want to make sure you take out the purple orbs without hitting the red ones too much. A better way to do this is using Luminous Drill or Chainsaw. Using these on rapid-fire triggers and hitting his head should take him out quickly. Remember, you can eat Polymasters for immunity if needed. The next boss is Tiny, who does extreme bite damage without melee immunity. Piercing Thunder Charge or simply high-speed chainsaws are enough to end the fight very quickly. Next, we have the Leviathan, which can be made to kill itself by using a projectile weakening curse. The Great Triangle boss, awakened by three eggs, can be defeated quite easily with matter erasing spells such as Black Hole. However, this might not unlock the Pillar Fragment, so explosion damage or long distance chainsaws are your best bet. For the next unlock, we need to defeat the Large Friend miniboss after already defeating all nine smaller horror monsters in its vicinity. At the moment, this is quite easy to accomplish, but that might change in the future. And for the final pillar fragment, we just need to defeat Colmicilma in any way, no orbs required. Very simple methods of killing it involve chainsaws, acid, or freeze melee. 
With all the boss fragments complete, we move on to pillar number five, which involves a few things, but primarily deals with the special challenge runs we can perform in the game. The first fragment unlocks simply by picking up an orb. Any ordinary orb around the world will do. The second one unlocks by picking up a corrupted orb from a parallel world. You can avoid taking damage if you're careful enough to pick up the orb without touching the poison heart inside. For the third, you need to pick up 11 orbs total. Here's a map showing the locations of all 11 orbs in the main world, but corrupted orbs in parallel worlds count as well. Now for the challenge run trophies. This first one requires you to get to the end room without killing anything, even Colmy. The easiest way to go about doing this is by speedrunning or digging directly to the end room, freezing and digging through the lava, or fungal shifting it to something safer. Next up, you have to get to the end room without picking up any gold. Even a single pixel of gold powder is too much, so treat it like it's instant death. Now, you have to finish a run in the end room within five minutes. This is more easily done by using the daily practice run mode, which starts you further into the game, sometimes fairly close to the end, which is an necessity for the next one. Finishing a run under one minute? You must go to the end room for this. The mountain altar will not work. So finding a good daily that starts you far into the game with speed or teleports is vital. But hey, I have one for you right here. If you set your system date to January 23rd, 2021, you get to start all the way down at Temple of the Art with Acceleradium and fast boss killer spells. And it's a relatively tame Temple of the Art with a pretty straightforward path to the bottom. It might take some practice, but I'll show you guys my entire run right now if you want to use this as an example. Eldritch portals are another thing that kill Zero Orb Colmy very quickly. The last challenge unlock is for getting to the end room without taking a single point of damage. Practice makes perfect. Moving on, this fragment unlocks when you simply create the new sun. See my Sunseed quest guide for reference. And this one unlocks when you create the Dark Sun. Now, for this one, you have to kill Colmy with one of the suns. Normal sun or dark sun, either one will work. The final sun-related pillar piece unlocks when you trigger the supernova event by making the new sun and dark sun meet, causing a world-altering explosion that outright removes a large amount of the solid material of the world or turns it into fire. This destruction extends across all parallel worlds and New Game Plus loops. Not even the multiverse is safe from the destructive might of Noita's celestial bodies. With the fifth pillar complete, we've now discussed all the Sunseed quest-related fragments. As I mentioned earlier, there's an efficient way of unlocking all of these in one run. What you need to do is first create a new sun and then consume both the normal and dark moons with it. You can do this either by moving the same sun from one moon to another, or by creating two suns, one at each moon, whichever way you decide. Afterwards, you're going to want to acquire another sun seed from a parallel world forgotten boss before going into New Game Plus, where you'll then create a dark sun at the dark moon, consuming it and unlocking the fourth pillar piece. Both killing the boss with a sun and the supernova event can be performed at any time during this process, whenever it's more convenient for you. And now, let's move on, at last, to the sixth and final tree pillar. Starting from the bottom, we unlock this fragment by completing an entire run with the Curse of Greed active. Easier said than done, you're going to want to move fast, and having strong levitation helps as well. The next one is unlocked by bringing a horror monster into the Diamond of Avarice, much more easily accomplished on the back of Carl, the drone. This happy-looking face right here is unlocked by bringing Toveri, the big friend, to the Diamond of Avarice, unlocking the Giga Holy Bomb spell. 
This one unlocks by obtaining the crystal key from the alchemist boss and then using both the ocarina notes and Kantali notes to charge the key and then using it to open the dark chest. Then this one unlocks by charging another key at the four music machines scattered around the world and using it to open the coral chest. And then this one is unlocked by simply opening the steel chest within the robotic egg encased in lava at the end of the end of everything quest line. Then, by activating the Curse of Greed and traveling all the way to the Diamond of Avarice at the top of the tower and jumping inside, you unlock Divide by 10 and this fragment. This next one requires you to obtain at least one gourd from the cave high above the ground along the western wall and then wield it against Colmy. You do not have to throw it, simply having it in your inventory will work. As long as the boss turns into a gourd, the achievement will unlock. This fragment will unlock by first obtaining the essences of earth, fire, air, and water, and then completing a run with them active. There's a rare chance you'll find this structure in the coal pits. Standing on top of it for 10 seconds will open a portal. Entering this portal will unlock the pillar fragment. Likewise, there's a rare chance to find this structure in the snowy depths. Filling it with either variant of teleportation will open a portal. Entering that portal unlocks the fragment. Either on the top right or left of Hisi Base, you'll find a spell shop. Above that spell shop is the Hourglass Chamber. Pouring either variant of Tele into the Hourglass opens yet another portal that unlocks a pillar fragment when entered. This Eye Room also has a chance to contain some very nice spells. Then, throwing a normal tablet into the center of the fishing hut teleports you into the first of two underwater bunkers as well as unlocks a fragment. The second one is triggered by throwing one of the reforged tablets into the center of the fishing hut, unlocking yet another fragment. And at last, the final achievement is unlocked by triggering the Altar of Nullification. And there we go, the last of the six tree pillars complete comprising just about all of the secrets in Noita. Remember, if you want full details on each of these secrets, I've dedicated most of my time over the past two years producing videos of them. But if you don't want to watch the videos, there's always the wiki. A prominent member of the community, Mills, also made this very well done diagram of all the tree pillars with details of each. You can find this linked on the official community discord. Anyway guys, I hope you have a great day. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Happy Noiting. Baba da ba dee ba da ba baba is you. Yeah.